Hello, this is, I'm Pastor Charles, and this is Ladidra Maris. And we are Kingdom Maris Marriage on Facebook and Instagram. Our YouTube channel is Interwoven with God. Mm -hmm. Today, we just want to come on for a brief second, and we want to kind of talk about microwave marriages. marriages. Go ahead. Baby. Yeah, and um, we know the title mm -hmm. within itself is um not realistic um for an actual kingdom marriage so we chose this title because we find out um about a lot of marriages husband and wives who put pressure on one another to become what they think is an ideal um kingdom husband kingdom wife and um within the first couple of years they're trying everything they can and not necessarily in the beginning of the marriage because it can happen you know in the latter years as well but you're trying everything you can to get this spouse to be what you think they need to be yeah. without even realizing that you're you're requesting for God to do something instant in them you're hindering their process of growing mm -hmm. and you don't trust God um, to to finish the work that he has started with them Remember, when you met them, they were the one that was able to put a smile on your face. Um, you guys <laughs> went out together. You laughed. You played. You cried together. You had moments of building one another. And then something happened. Something happened where you begin to switch, and instead of um, focusing more on their strengths, now you're looking at their weaknesses and try to find ways to fix them, work on them. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge hindrance in, in marriages. Um, it's also something that the enemy uses to get wives, husbands to get off course. Mm -hmm. Because as long as he can get you to focus on the weaknesses of your spouse, as long as he can get you to focus on the flaws and not trust God um, for a greater outcome in their life, you're gonna constantly be in a cycle, in a pattern and eventually, what ends up happening is something else catches your eye. Someone else catches your eye. Uh, someone else's conversation is a little bit better than, than your spouse's. So that microwave marriage, it covers so many grounds that the area we want to expound on the most is putting so much pressure on your spouse that they now they don't even have a desire to want to do because you've pressured them so much into becoming who you think they need to be for God instead of trusting God to do the work through them. Yeah, absolutely. And and we sometimes have a tendency to take on the role of being God in their lives, mm -hmm. trying to get them to immediately be this perfect spouse, this perfect individual right. and um now realizing that we are actually hindering their process mm -hmm. because the Holy Spirit is committed to getting us to where we uh, are supposed, to, supposed be to be in Christ. But sometimes in marriage, we have a tendency to try to kind of help God alone. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do, we want to just kind of share our story today a little bit with you. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, when we were dating, um, this was not even something that I even had asked God for, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, God began in a vision to show me my wife's worth. Uh, when I was praying, when I was in my single state and I was praying, I was praying for uh, a woman that loved God with all her heart, mind, body, and soul, and I wanted a praise dancer. I wanted a worshiper. So... Uh, come to find out she was a praise dancer so that let me know that God heard my he heard my prayer he heard mm -hmm. my cry and so she was a worshiper but I had a vision I, this is big huge I had a, a, a I guess you could say a tour guide he had grabbed me by the hand and he was walking me into this room mm -hmm. and there was this big old throne and all I could see were uh, was this man on mm. his throne, but all I could see was his sandal. He was a giant. And, and, and not really seeing his face or anything, I was aware that that was God himself. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Again, all I could just see was he had a sandals and he was sitting on his throne. And so, mm. the God told me to sit here, wait. You're about to see something. So, this little little lady 
in a white and and, and blue uh, dress was praise dancing before the Lord before his throne yeah and she was just dancing and it was just it was just wonderful and I heard the voice of the Lord say not everybody can dance before yeah. me and when the tour God had walked me out and when I came back it was like it had left such an impression mm -hmm. on my heart that it was almost like God was writing on my heart her value and her worth. Mm -hmm. And so I saw her expected end. What I was physically looking at right before my eyes was different than what was what God had revealed to me on down the road. Mm -hmm. And so his worth his value of my wife was impressed upon me. And so I tried to do everything that I could to hold that same value in my heart regarding her. But at the same time, what I was shown in the end and what I was actually experiencing didn't match. Mm -hmm. It didn't match, did it? Yeah, it did. And, 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 and so what I tried to do was take it upon myself to get her to hurry up and be like the end mm -hmm. when all God was asking me to do was love her. Yeah. Not not beat her over the head with scripture, mm -hmm. not condemn her for uh, all the wrong things that she was doing, right. but to just love her, just to partner with the Holy Spirit to love her because mm -hmm. I wanted, I wanted, I, lo I loved who I was with but on down the road, I, I I really wanted this right now too. I wanted the end result because the end result was 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 beautiful. Yeah. Now keep in mind what I'm looking at today was good also, but it had some flaws. flaws. Yeah. The, the mouth wasn't quite saying everything that I wanted it to say. Right. And, and some other things were going on, and so I was like. Let me help God get to help this her way. get yes. to the end of what he showed me. And <laughs> what I ended up doing, I ended up working against myself. Yeah. What ended up happening is a lot of times I felt um, crushed, uh, defeated. I felt like there was a lot of weight put on my shoulders to be something that uh, or to be someone that I had not. I didn't have a full understanding of. And so. When my husband shares that, uh, you know, he saw me ministering and dance before God. It wasn't just about um, the praise dancing that yeah. he saw. He saw um, the me maturing in my worship, in my obedience to God. He saw me uh, blossom right there in the presence of God. The the value that he's that he that God allowed him to see. Um, you know, God, God gave him a glimpse of who I'd become and who I was in year one and who I am today is nowhere near who I was in year one. Um, but in year one, we had to understand some things of, um, I have a process and, and everything that was going to happen from the time we met, even up until now was going to be making me and molding me and, and who he wanted. Uh, who he saw in the end and who I was then, he actually had to learn patience mm -hmm. and learn how to just let God um, mm -hmm. do the work in me. Yeah. And I would tell my husband all the time, I don't process things like you do. I don't look at things from this perspective. So giving me your input on it is not going to make me do it the way you do it. Mm -hmm. It's only going to make me, you know, I'll, I can see your perspective of it, but that word has to become real to me. Yeah. It had to become a revelation to me and, and the worth that what he saw with, with my worth, I didn't see it no. because I had been, um, in one broken relationship after another, after another. So imagine the work that God needed to do within me, within my heart to even get me to this state. And what happens in marriages is that uh, sometimes the spouse 
um, who who believes with their whole heart that they're having faith for this individual to change, that spouse is also not counting up the cost on what this other spouse may have to go through or what they have to endure. And what I love about uh, is Romans 5, and it's um, it, it begins at the, uh, the third verse, and it says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us but when you go back and begin at that third at that third verse and the fourth verse that's a process yeah. um, knowing that um, we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. And there are so many things that um, that produce uh, the character of God. And God will use so many things. That's what I'm trying to say. God will use so many things to help you produce the mm-hmm. character. So just because you don't see it in your spouse today does not mean that in year five, they, they're still going to be the same yeah, way. Yeah. They have to process that word and that word has to do a work in them. Mm-hmm. And we hear that all the time, but what does that really mean? Well, for me, um, like, like understanding that I was the apple of God's eye. Well, that, that scripture is in Zechariah and that scripture has a lot to do with worth. Well, I didn't understand that, but my husband, God charged my husband to treat me as that hmm. so that I can come to, into a realization of it from the word to seeing it manifest through my husband and me living it out every day. So here it is. I'm experiencing the love of God. I'm experiencing the love of God through my husband. I'm experiencing the word. Now I'm able to walk in and say, I really do understand what it means to be the apple of God's eye. Mm -hmm. Because when you're the apple of his eye, no harm can come against you. And, 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 um, what am I trying to say? Um, it, even when you're afflicted, harm and the trials don't have the victory. When you're the apple of God's eye, he deems you to be yeah. um, worthy. Uh, like there's um, a description beyond just saying, um, my husband would describe it as being a treasure hidden in a field, mm-hmm. which is a scripture in Matthew. <laughs> yeah. um, but there aren't even enough words to describe how 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 it looks or how it feels to just be the apple of God's eye and it took me a long time to understand what that meant to me and and the more the more I understood it the more I could become um and I'm still becoming but the more I could become and start that process but when God told me that I was the apple of his eye that meant that I have a love that will never fail me. Yeah. That meant that I have a love that will always show up for me no matter what, um, no matter what my flaws may be, um, that even in my flaws, his grace is sufficient yeah. and that um, I'm stronger because I'm in him. So understanding I had to, that, that word has to be processed in your spouse's life. Uh, so you can't rush the process because if you do, you apply pressure. Yeah. And anytime pl- pressure is applied to a person, it'll start to make them feel unworthy. Mm-hmm. So even though the end result was for me to see how worthy I was, there were moments where I felt unworthy. Yeah. Uh, God had to teach me, take your hands off. Let me be God. And I just need you to partner with me to love your wife where she is right now. Yeah. Because as 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 you love, she grows. She grows more yeah. and more. I had to create an environment that was conducive for her to yeah. grow. And so when I took my hands off and allowed God to do the work, I wasn't always pointing out her imperfections. I started looking at the things that she was good at, the strength that she was she was good at, and then yeah. building on those things. And also, I, I made a, 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 a vital mistake of wanting my wife to be like me, think like me, mm-hmm. move like me, uh, say things like me. But yeah. God let me know that 
Team Maris doesn't need another Charles. It needs Charles and LaDedra. Mm -hmm. LaDedra and Charles. And so once I realized that, there's no growth that can occur yeah. when I'm trying to make her into me. Mm -hmm. Or she's trying to make me into her. But God put us together as a unique blend yes. that can come together and be one and be united in him. Yeah. And so when I realized that we don't, I, I don't need another Charles in the marriage because what my wife brings may be a little different than what mm -hmm. I need and what I bring is different than what she has but yeah. there's there's a completeness there's, there's a, a oneness yeah. there's a fullness of God being represented he said he created a male and female yeah to have dominion and authority yeah. over the earth not one another but dominion and authority yes. in the earth that was really good that that small little nugget right there my husband um, gave the scripture God said he he gave male and female dominion um, but they are not to have dominion over one another which means don't get so caught up in trying to control one another um, thinking that you're God just because God shows you a glimpse of something you don't have the full story. You only have it in parts. You don't know what it's going to take for your spouse to get where they need to be. They may have to come in contact with an individual that's going to give them a word. And that word is going to be this scripture. My husband taught me. He said uh, one person. Paul plants. Follows waters, but it's God that, that gives, gives the increase. increase. So make sure that you, yeah. you're planting and watering. And whoever plants and whoever waters is 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 is, is no different. But it's God that gives it's the God increase. Gives but the you got to make sure that a husband and wife is planting and watering, and yeah. their life so increase can come. Yeah, and you, like I was saying, you don't know who your spouse is going to meet along the way. Maybe a male figure. Um, you know, your wife may meet um, a, a powerful woman in God that may sow a seed into her to, to help her to flourish more. You don't know the timeline. So while you're putting pressure on them to get them where you want them to be, well, they may not meet this individual that it, it's really the word of God. It's really God. They may not meet that individual until year two. <laughs> But you're applying so much pressure in year one that before you know it, the marriage is cracked. And, and, and it's like planting the seed in the ground. You toil the ground, you break it up, you plant the seed, then you water it. The sun is shining yes. and you're sitting there all day waiting for fruit to come. <laughs> It doesn't work that way. It doesn't it's work a, it's that a, way. It's a process and yeah. it's over time. And the woman that I met and the woman that she is today is completely different. Yeah. And and I'm excited mm -hmm. and I'm happy about it. And I just I just I just can't <laughs> wait to continue to grow. Because yeah. you, the, the, the love of God is is a a, a a perfecting love. It's a, it's a, yes. a maturing love. Um, it's a, yes. It, 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 just it, it, the God just said, just simply love her with my love. Yeah. And when I began to just love her, where she was every day, every moment, I started seeing growth. Yeah. But when I was chastising and da 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 da. I was working against my own self because mm -hmm. she's a reflection of me. What yeah. do I want her to reflect? Yeah. I want her to reflect the kingdom of God. Yes. And, and, and I'm going to have to be the vessel that, love, that the love of God flows through yeah. to, to get her where, you know, she needs to be. And plus, trust God in the process as mm -hmm. well. Because the reality is, is that um, back in, in, in Genesis, when God established the husband and the wife, he established them in a garden of love. He knew that the place where they would flourish the most would be love. Um, so if you're constantly trying to fix on your spouse and you're not loving them, fixing them is not loving them. Um, condemning them is not loving them. They were created in a garden full of love. And so when you take away that love and now you just have this garden before you know it, now you have weeds because you're not watering the garden the way you should be watering it. Mm -hmm. um, you water the garden with love. And like my husband said, you don't sit you don't put the seed in the ground on Monday and sit there every day, all day, you know, like a hawk trying to see, you know, when you're going to sprout up. I did my part. I did it in faith. I did this. I did this. But 
you, you're, you're not helping. Yeah. You're not helping one another. And then you can put it in the ground knowing that the process is going to produce something great. So then you just come back and you just kind of check on it. Just just make sure it's doing okay. <laughs> make sure it, yeah. it's got enough water, it's getting enough sun. Nurturing and it, caring you know, for one another. Next thing you know, you see something sprout. Yeah. You see fruit and then you're just... You just have. Yeah, and we can give an example of that. You know, Galatians 5 and 22 talks to us about the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, just because you don't see um, uh, patience in an area with your spouse, it does not mean that they won't have patience later on. Yeah. Let the Word do the work in them. You've mm -hmm. been praying, um, which is also another form or, of, of sowing or watering the seed. You've been praying. Let the Word do the work. Mm -hmm. what, the word, what the Word looks like at work is if they would normally stumble in this area, but they got it right on Monday, applaud them mm -hmm. I look look at you you're doing a great job I appreciate you for doing this for me you yeah. didn't have to think about me today but you did and you that's watering it that's along the way you're yeah. encouraging them yeah. to be better and that praise especially for a husband yeah. that praise it does something to them. It excites them, and and it and it makes them want to do more because now they're receiving some uh, appreciation, some respect, and praise for the things that they're doing yeah. that are right. Yeah, recognize your 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 spouse's efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, recognize it. Focus more on that because those things you can build on, and then those weaknesses will find out. They, they're not yeah. even a factor anymore because you have built now on strengths and you now have a foundation mm. which you can you can grow and you can love from yeah. and then you 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 don't you don't want to cause that division to to make your spouse feel like they're inadequate right. or they're incapable both of doing anything right or getting mm. this right so love them where they are and watch them grow and mature. Yeah. yeah. What you don't ever want to do is constantly throw scriptures at them. God does not use the scriptures to uh, beat us. Mm -hmm. um, he does not use the scriptures to, you know, like take it like a whip and whip us. Now, the word of God, it does tell us that the word is like a two edged, two -edged sword. sword. Yes. yes, it does. It tells us that. But nowhere in there does it tell you to take the sword and just start cutting your spouse. It doesn't say God, the spirit of the Lord with the words that you release into your spouse. The spirit of the Lord is backing those words. All you have to do is release the word. Mm -hmm. But what we don't ever want to do is beat our spouse over the head with it trying to get them to become something instantly because I'm gonna tell you something if they become something um, without the work they're gonna easily revert back to it they were only becoming just to please you yeah. and, and, and that's when you have situations where uh, a spouse will do good for a week and then they're back to their old ways mm -hmm. but when you really let God do it and you love then you'll have a lasting yeah. change you yeah. you'll actually have almost like a repentance to where it's changed behavior and they completely turn from that old behavior mm -hmm. and then you see this new this new creation being yeah. being brought into it so and uh, that, that another thing is that's where um setting up idols come in because you you want your husband to be or you want your wife to be what you want them to be and now that because they love you so much they're trying to be what you want them to be without the spirit of the lord mm -hmm. and so now they're idolizing your opinion they're trying to become who you want and and before long because because they're not doing it in God, they're gonna get tired. They're gonna get weary. And they're gonna say, you know what? You don't accept me for who I am. You don't love me for who I am. And they're gonna revert back. When the reason why God brought you in their life or vice versa, is to be partners to help one another mm -hmm. so if you were going to do the same thing that the enemy does imagine how your spouse for your spouse will feel like okay you're doing the same thing that the adversary does what's the difference you telling me about god but you're treating me like the enemy and then here, here's the key when god showed me my wife's end it wasn't based on me making sure she got there <laughs> right or, or, or my method <laughs> right because guess what my method might not have produced this end but guess what god showed me his method his, so yes. i had to be his in partnership end. with him to love to produce mm -hmm. this ending so yeah 
just make sure that you are in alignment with God's word. Yes. As you love your spouse, as you love your wife, as you respect your husband, because that way, whatever God has shown you mm -hmm. will be. Yeah. Because you take it upon your own. Remember, our ways are not his thoughts. Mm -hmm. Our ways are not his ways. So we have to follow in his way. In his way. His will be done. Yeah. Okay. So I completely agree. You completely agree? I completely agree. I love who you are. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> so yeah. remember. You don't want a microwave marriage because you won't even appreciate yeah. each other if if all of a sudden she's perfect and he's perfect right. today. What what kind of journey would you have? Y'all just if perfect. You just just sitting there just perfect. That means that just like the scripture we just read, um, tribulations produces perseverance and perseverance produces it's character. character. What character do you have? What what story do you have to share with anybody else that will give them hope yeah. of, of, of a brighter future, of, of a better marriage in God? God wants to take us through some things because he knows the areas of us that need pruning. Yeah. And if we're trying to skip the pruning process and just come right on over here to maturity, then it's not, it, it's not even realistic. And you won't even appreciate that the work that God is doing in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, the Bible tells us that we will be known as his disciples by the way we love, mm -hmm. by the way we love. Simply by if you want to take great honor in being a kingdom husband or a kingdom wife, yeah. then it's simply by the way you love. Yeah. How do you love the very first person, the very first soul that God mm -hmm. has given you? To help make it. You don't want to be the reason why your your spouse stumbles. Yeah. I don't ever want to be the reason why you hurt. Yeah. Or you don't make it or you doubt God. I never want to be that man yeah. or, or that spouse that does that. So you want them to help them to grow and know that the same patience and uh. grace and love and mercy that God has shown you, you now out of that relationship should be able to give that same grace, same love patience and understanding to your spouse to them yeah and the testimony behind this is when my husband began to partner with God there were things that God revealed to him to speak into me um, I remember when my husband told me that uh, I would produce multiple books that that revelation had different meanings whereas today we own our own publishing company I remember when my husband told me that um, we do not have uh, people's salvation. We only believe and trust in God. Rely on God in you. That built my confidence up. Um, it started helping me to 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 rely more on God. Mm -hmm. um, every time my husband would give me a word, there there was so much fruit attached to that word that I was able to feast off of that word and then go and grow in that word. And and that word took on multiple meanings in my life mm -hmm. when I first met my husband I was a teacher um, and it was my husband that I had a desire to write my first book it was my husband that said you know write it I'm, I'm gonna walk you through it together we're gonna get through it together because my first book was was a very painful book that I needed to write and release to help bring about deliverance in other people's lives. But it was my husband that now no longer operating from a microwave mentality of, I gotta have it, gotta have it right now. Now it's, I wanna take the journey with you. I wanna see you you blossom, this, this, this beautiful, um, I, I guess we'll use, uh, a uh, 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 flower if, if if we have to use something just to kind of give you a, a, a description of something in, in, in bloom um, mm -hmm. but my husband was like I, I want to take this journey with you I want to blossom with you I want to see all that God has and, and I'm telling you bit by bit not only did I begin to see but he started to see other things about him that he needed to work on that started to transform mm -hmm. and that, that, that helped us to see that usually the spouse that is um that has the mentality of 
quick, 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 hasn't taken the time out to see what God wants to do through them yeah. in the process of yeah. their spouse getting to another place. So God was doing something greater in the both of us that we couldn't even see. So yeah. God showed him my, ex my end, but God also said, I want to take you on a journey yeah. I, and I want to cultivate some things within you that you think are okay, but I want to show you there's more in there's, you. There's more. There's always more. Mm -hmm. So um, trust the process. Um, ask God to, to reveal your spouse's worth and then partner with yeah. him to uh, make sure that she gets to that expected end. And But allow God to be the source and yeah. not your flesh. Yeah. So uh, we hope that something was said today to help you. Amen. Uh, can, continue to grow in your relationship with Christ and to continue to grow in your marriage. I tell you what, um, the things that we went through in the beginning, it helped build a friendship that we yes. have today and that we share today. That was a we, part of that journey. Yeah, we, we, we have a, a strong friendship and yeah. I can honestly say that um, my wife, you are my best friend. Mm -hmm. I can honestly mm -hmm. say that and, and I can share uh, things that I'm going through and God has given yeah. her Great insight, great intercession on my behalf to 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 get uh, yeah. prayers answered on my behalf, and so um, w w it's 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 easy. And the most misused and abused phrase in the English language is "I love you," hmm. but can you say that I like I like who you I are? I like you. I, I like, like who you. you are. Yes, and so you <laughs> want to get to that point. Sometimes adversity it builds it builds character, yeah. which also, like the scripture says, it produces hope. Yeah. And so hope in Christ never disappoints. Mm -mm. So yeah. just trust the process. Yeah, and just to add on to what my husband said about friendship, um, as long as he was the husband that was like, you know, you got you got to be, you got to be, you, you, we got to get you here, we got to get you here ASAP because of this, 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 and this. Um, I was losing my friend because see with a friend you can share your weaknesses with a friend you can share your flaws yeah. and um, and you know it's a no judgment zone mm -hmm. with a friend with a real friend um, and the Bible says there's a friend that sticks closer, closer than, than a brother, brother. and he, he that scripture is likened to 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 Jesus uh, you know our Lord and Savior who's our friend and when your spouse is housing heaven housing the Holy Spirit on the inside of them I'm sitting up having a conversation with the Holy Spirit about things that are happening with me and there's no judgment there's no um yeah. throwing it back up in my face there's no feeling of insecurity it becomes a safe place yeah and that's why that's another reason why the micro a microwave marriage it, it's not kingdom it's not uh, the world shows you all of the things that you can have instant, but you can't take that instant mentality and then bring it into the kingdom and think that you're going to produce these results really quickly yeah. in your marriage because you'll miss some really, really beautiful moments. Yeah. Cause like my husband said, like my husband, he he's my best friend, and I talk to him about things. Um, things happen between us that I'm like, oh my. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can laugh together. Yeah. We can play together. I mean, we can stuff that you really want to ball up and cry about. You got a friend who's gonna understand it. And if and 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 in a lot of times my friend has sat right next to me and cried with me and held me. Mm -hmm. Um but when you're constantly trying to fix on each other, nobody would want to come and tell you anything because yet yeah, this would be another thing that you have that you'll scrutinize, yeah. that you'll, you know, criticize and make them feel small about. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to feel like that. But when you give that safe place, that friendship, yeah. it, it, it becomes security. Yeah. You know, and you want that in marriage. So stop trying to rush the process because in rushing the process, you're taking pieces away from your spouse that you could really be enjoying. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Uh, so we hope something was said yeah. today to, to help you and just trust the process because yes. where you are today is not where you're going to be tomorrow. So always know that God is with you and nobody, and I mean nobody, <laughs> wants to see your marriage prosper 
like God. Like God. So just remember, you're in covenant with him. He's going to make sure. He's faithful and just to make sure yeah. that you get where you need to be. All right. Amen. I'm, I'm Pastor Charles Maris, and this is my wife, Ladidra. And we say, God bless you. And we God thank bless you. you. We love We're you. We're always praying for you. Always. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.